Edward the Sixth, the Boy King on the Table. It is the 6th of July, 1553, and England is about to plunge into chaos. Edward the Sixth, the son of Henry the Eighth and Jane Seymour, the boy who inherited a Protestant kingdom at just nine years old, is dead. He is only 15, pale and wasted, coughing up blood in his bed at Greenwich Palace. The official line? He died of consumption, the Tudor word for wasting diseases. But whispers spread immediately. Some said poison, some said divine judgment. Others pointed to the sins of his father, the bloated tyrant Henry VIII, visiting themselves on the sun. No autopsy was performed. The boy was rushed into burial at Westminster Abbey while the succession crisis exploded around him. But today we're going to imagine what would have happened if Edward VI's frail little body had been placed on the modern mortuary table. The Last Days Edward's decline had been written in his diaries and the reports of foreign ambassadors. He was tall for his age but thin, his face pinched, his cough constant. By 1553 he was racked with fever, night sweats and bloody sputum. In his final weeks he could barely breathe, his fingers turned blue, his lips cracked. Courtiers whispered he was being poisoned by the Dudleys to secure the succession for Lady Jane Grey. Others said it was divine punishment for England's heresy. But the truth was in his body, not in politics. The external examination. On the table lies a boy barely out of childhood. His body is emaciated, the ribs sharp against the skin, the belly slightly swollen from fluid retention. The face is gaunt, cheeks hollow, lips dark. The skin shows a grey pallor flecked with purple blotches from poor circulation. The fingernails are ridged and blue. The frame is that of a youth, but the body has been ravaged as though by decades of disease, opening the chest. The ribs are pulled back. The lungs are immediately abnormal. They are heavy, lumpy, mottled with white nodules and streaks of blood. When cut, they ooze thick pus. This is tuberculosis, the great killer of the 16th century. The airways are narrowed, the lung tissue riddled with cavitations, pockets eaten away by infection. This explains the boy's endless coughing, the bloody sputum, the night sweats. Fluid fills the lower lobes. Pneumonia has taken hold as well. Edward's final breaths were not just weak, they were suffocating. The heart is small, appropriate for his age, but strained. Months of oxygen starvation had pushed it to the limit. Into the abdomen. The abdomen reveals more damage. The liver is swollen and mottled, likely from secondary infection. The intestines are ulcerated in places. Tuberculosis was not confined to the lungs, it had spread through the body. The kidneys are pale and scarred, possibly also affected by TB. Their function was already failing, contributing to the swelling in his limbs and belly. The spleen is enlarged, the immune system's desperate attempt to fight an infection it could never win. The brain. The skull is opened, the brain is thinly covered with membranes, showing inflammation, a sign of tubercular meningitis. Edward's confusion, headaches and fevers in his last weeks weren't just from the lungs. The infection had reached his brain and spinal cord. This was the final stage of the disease. Death was inevitable. Modern diagnosis. If this were written up today, the verdict would be grim but clear. Cause of death, disseminated tuberculosis with pneumonia and tubercular meningitis. Contributing conditions. Malnutrition. Chronic infection and wasting. Secondary organ failure. Kidneys, liver. In plain English, Edward VI was eaten alive from the inside by tuberculosis, a disease that slowly suffocated, starved and poisoned him until he could no longer stand. The theories. Poison? Unlikely. There was no sudden collapse, no violent vomiting or convulsions. His decline was long, steady and classic for TB. Measles or smallpox? He had childhood illnesses, yes, but they weren't what killed him. Divine judgment. The Tudors loved to spin morality tales from deathbeds, but the truth is simpler. 
Edward lived in a world without antibiotics and TB was everywhere. His youth and frailty made him easy prey. The final irony. Henry VIII had dreamed of his son carrying on the Tudor dynasty, ruling with strength and ruling with strength and power. Instead, Edward wasted away in a palace bed, his body consumed by disease before his reign ever came into its own. No scalpel touched him in 1553, but if one had, the verdict would have been clear. A boy destroyed by tuberculosis, not by poison or prophecy. So that is Edward VI, the boy king, imagined on the autopsy table. Lungs rotting with infection, brain inflamed with meningitis, kidneys failing, liver swollen, body wasted. That was past people, Edward VI, one boy, one dynasty's hope, maximum disease, minimum chance of survival.